the psychology of breakthrough. Today, I'm gonna to give you the secret to what it means to break through in your life. Make sure you hang around all the way to the end of the video. I'm gonna give you seven practical things that you can do straight away to get moving on becoming skilled in the art of breakthrough and understanding everything that that means. Hey everybody, if you're new to the channel and we haven't met, my name is Andrew. I've had the privilege of helping men and families for nearly 30 years to develop their inner life health and sustainability and to deal with subjects like we're dealing with today, the psychology of breakthrough. Fantastically, I've seen so many great results of people have applied these actionable tips in their life on a daily basis to help them become the best version of themselves. I'm sure what you're gonna to hear today will help you as well. Let's get into it now. Well, in recent times, we've been talking about raising strong men and we talked about raising strong fathers and raising strong sons. And we talked about this idea of becoming a father worth following and raising dead men and restoring hope. And in our last episode of that series, we talked about raising resilient men. Well, this episode today, the psychology of breakthrough is connected to that last episode because men need to recognize that they are on a road to resilience. In other words, you can become more resilient, overcome your challenges and learn what it means to truly persevere and defeat your giants. And so in this episode, we're talking all about the psychology of breakthrough. I recently shared one of my stories of competing in Ironman triathlon and an endurance event that really teaches you about perseverance and teaches you so much about developing the inner muscles in your soul, in your emotions, in your thoughts, and in your will that will actually transfer to all of the arenas of your life. And that's specifically what we're talking about today, the psychology of breakthrough. When we use the word breakthrough, what we mean is the ability to face up to a wall, whether it's relational, emotional, mental, financial, vocational, whatever sphere of your life it's in, coming up to a wall, an obstacle, that is resisting you and the ability and the skill and the know-how to break through that wall to everything that's good on the other side. That's what we mean by breakthrough. And as I said, this can happen in so many different contexts of your life. And so what you're gonna learn in today's video will be so powerful and so transformative for you if you apply it, especially if you watch right through to the end and listen to these seven practical actionable tips that I'm gonna to provide today that come from decades of applying this stuff in my own life. It's worked for me and I know that it can work for you. So here's my firm belief. Observationally and experientially, my belief is that the process of breaking through lives in our soul. Sure, there are many things we've got to do in our life with our physical body, but the process of breaking through our obstacles actually lives in our soul. Our thoughts, our emotions, and especially our will are all contributors to the development, the strengthening, and the application of the muscle in our soul that facilitates breakthrough. Now you might need to pause the video there and listen to that again and write it down, but I really want you to capture that understanding that in our soul is where this process exists and happens. It's so important that everyone watching and listening understands that breakthrough is not a gift or ability. It's not a personality trait. It's not something you're born with or born without. It is a learned skill that's accessible to everyone. And I really wanna emphasize that point for you because some of you, when you hear the word breakthrough and overcoming and defeating your giants and beating obstacles, you are concluding straight away that you have not got what it takes. Well, I wanna arrest your thought process there and correct it if you'll allow me to say you actually do have what it takes because it's not a personality trait. It's not something you're born with or without. It's not a skill or ability that you may or may not have, no. It's a learned ability that's accessible to every single person. Now, we do have to talk about the super importance of there needing to be an obstacle that opposes you. I know some of you, you feel so defeated and you feel so tired and discouraged. And so the thought of another obstacle 
feels debilitating. But I'd like you to uh, change your thinking on that if you'll allow me to just turn things around and put a new angle on things to help you realize that we all need that obstacle that opposes us because there's a reason on the other side that is calling us forward. It's so, so important to understand that without these two things, the obstacle and the reason on the other side, without the obstacle and the reason, the psychology of breakthrough would be null and void. There would be no point of it existing. Here's another way we can say this. If the obstacle was small, you would have already overcome it. Or if your reason didn't matter, why would you bother? And so if we can understand the interconnected relationship between the obstacle that's in front of us and the worthwhile reason to get to the other side, the connection between those two is actually very powerful for us. And as I said, if the obstacle was tiny and easy to overcome, you already would have. Or if the reason on the other side didn't matter, why would you bother climbing through the obstacle? You wouldn't. And so we actually do need the obstacle and we do need the reason to push through and get to that other side. You see, nearly everything in our lives as men that's worth pursuing, nearly everything that's worth pursuing as men is actually on the other side of an obstacle or at the top of a mountain or behind a barrier somehow. You can use whatever metaphor works for you, but the truth of the matter is, the most important things in life that we wanna pursue as men usually are standing behind a wall or at the top of a mountain. Why? Because life is so hard and it's against you? Well, sometimes we do get tempted to feel that way, but actually these things, these moments, these events in our life are part of the process of making who it is that we were born to be. Strong, resilient men, capable of climbing those mountains and overcoming those obstacles. Firstly, we want the opportunity to prove to ourselves we've got what it takes to get there. Secondly, we've got sons and daughters, biological and relational. Those who we're trying to set an example for who need to see us overcoming our obstacles so that they will get hope and inspiration that maybe one day they've got what it takes as well to beat their giants that are facing them. You see, the journey of the human spirit is built around this idea of overcoming obstacles and breaking through. It's in our DNA. Our DNA demands of us that we take on the challenge and we answer the question. I believe this. I believe our soul actually comes alive at the prospect of a successful conquest. To stand at the base of that mountain, real or figurative, with the question mark, are you able to climb it? Have you got what it takes to get there? Now I know, depending where your start point is, that can be a daunting prospect. Some of us feel more ready for that today than others. But my role and my goal for you is to help you develop that resilience so that you do arrive at your base camp, so to speak, with enough of what it takes to believe I've got what it takes in me to climb this mountain to achieve that result and set the example that you wanna set our spirit is willing, our vehicle is our body that we live in, but our battle is won and lost in the soul. So what have we learned so far? What we've learned about the psychology of breakthrough and the road to resilience, we have learned that the breakthrough muscle lives or dies, it grows or shrinks, it wins or it loses in our soul. And when we're talking about our soul, we're talking about our mind, our thought life, our emotions, and our will, which is our choice that we make to activate the direction of our life. That is the arena of our life where resilience is built and where the psychology of breakthrough lives, the process of breakthrough lives in our soul. I wanna give you a couple of really important thoughts here. The first one is the power of starting small. Never underestimate the fact that you can break through with tiny battles in order to develop the same muscles you're gonna to need to take on your biggest battles. They are the same, and we're gonna get into that a little more in just a moment, but there is power in starting small. Don't wait for something massive before you begin to work on your breakthrough muscles. Start today with whatever you've got in your hand. The second thought is this, there is tremendous power in simulation. 
In other words, taking everyday practical tasks and physical activities and likening those tasks, likening those activities to the real giants of your life. For example, most of us live by a task list and most of us have some kind of wrestle with procrastination. We see the items on our list, we see the time on our clock, and we ask ourselves, can we really get through our list today? And then procrastination starts to whisper. Some days we win, some days we lose, but most days we try to attack that task list. If you could refashion your mental approach, your psychological approach to that task list, you would realize that the very same muscles you need to activate internally to stick at it with those tasks and to beat procrastination are the same muscles in a smaller form, but the same muscles that you're gonna to need to access for breakthrough in the big issues of your life relationally, financially, emotionally, psychologically, vocationally, spiritually, all of the spheres that we've already talked about. There is tremendous power in simulating the small tasks so it prepares you for the big tasks and big challenges ahead. An example might be that you're sitting on the lounge, you've got a few items that you know you've got to get through today, and instead of allowing procrastination to win like it sometimes does, you say to yourself in your self-talk, you say, I'm going to count to three. And when I get to three, I'm getting off this lounge and going to that first task. And apart from that, there is no other magic bullet. There is no other magic button. You have to activate the power of your will to say to yourself, one, two, three, and then you get up and you go and you attack it. And when you do that process, you are actually training the inner life muscles of your psychology and your soul to begin growing and strengthening so that when you need to commit and recommit and recommit to the big challenges of life, you've got the inner soul muscles you need trained because they are the same ones whether the task is small or whether it's the greatest challenge that you've ever faced in your life. The process in the soul is the same regardless of the target. Okay guys, so by now we should be improving our understanding on the psychology of breakthrough, the power of starting small, the power of simulation, and understanding that the process of breakthrough lives and exists in our soul, our mind, our emotions, our willpower. That's where it lives, that's where it happens. And so as I said at the start of the video, I wanna give you seven practical, actionable tips Maybe you need to grab a pen. Maybe you need to get ready with the pause button because these are going to be pretty quick fire. Seven tips that you can action pretty quickly in your life that are going to help you to get on this road to resilience and start becoming the breakthrough master that you are actually always destined to be. So here we go. Number one, identify your reason. Earlier in the video, we talked about the relationship between the obstacle and the reason on the other side. It's so important that you clearly identify what your reason and your reasons are. What is the goal? Is it your family members? Is it a financial goal? Is it a career goal? What is that thing on the other side of your obstacle that is calling out to you so clearly saying, do not give up, keep pushing because you're going to get there on the other side. You need to identify your reason. Number two, you need to locate the obstacle. In other words, what is the specific detail of the thing that is standing in front of you? Is it a knowledge obstacle? Is it a fitness obstacle? Is it a financial obstacle? Is it emotional, relational? What kind of obstacle is in your way? How will you be able to take on the challenge if you don't know in great detail what you're dealing with? It's a vital part of the process. As we talked about, number one, you need to know that reason on the other side, but you also need to know in great color and great detail the nature of the obstacle that is trying to resist you. You've got to locate the obstacle that's blocking your path. Number three, we need to begin training the breakthrough muscle using simulation, practical tasks, and physical endurance. I'm gonna say that again. This one is gonna be powerful as you start to use it. Begin training the breakthrough muscles by combining simulation, practical tasks, and physical endurance. In other words, take those everyday activities, like your task list, like your routine, 
some physical training if possible. And as you engage in those activities, in your self-talk, you begin to say to yourself, the completion of this task, the completion of this project, the completion of this training run, this training ride, getting this finished is the same result to me as overcoming that big giant that I'm facing. If you would access the power of simulation on a daily basis, you will find that your breakthrough muscles will grow and strengthen at an exponential rate more than it otherwise would have. Number four, increase momentum by intentional procrastination practice. That's a big mouthful, so let's break it down for a moment. Increase your personal momentum by intentional procrastination practice. What does it mean? It means as often as you can, when you feel that monster of procrastination creeping up behind you, trying to sit on your back and hold you down, keep you in a slumber, I want you to have a go. At least once, two times, 10 times, build the momentum by having a go at practicing intentionally beating procrastination. This is where we access our self-talk and we count to three if that's a useful trigger or we use a word like get up and go, but we make a choice to say, when I get to this moment that I'm counting down to, I'm getting off the lounge, I'm getting out of the bed, I'm doing the task. What we're doing in that process is we're actually rewiring the neurology the neural pathways of our brain anatomy to learn a new process so that procrastination does not have its hold on us, but rather we are the ones telling procrastination what to do and we begin to build momentum by realizing we've got what it takes to get to the thing when we choose to get to the thing. Number five, develop increased lifting capacity over time. A lot like you do when you go to the gym, you start out small and everything's very sore because you haven't trained for a long time, but after a few weeks, after a couple of months, the soreness goes away and it becomes a good soreness, not a, a stiff soreness, but you start to increase your lifting capacity because your muscles are getting stronger. That's exactly what we're talking about here. As you begin to defeat procrastination, as you begin to access more and more powerful experiences with simulation, increase the capacity, and before long, you will find yourself doing the exact thing that you used to call your greatest giant, but you'll be taking it on with great, robust vigor, because you'll know, I'm ready for this, the muscles can handle it. Number six, the penultimate practical tip in today's video, as you're increasing your lifting capacity, begin to redirect it towards your big reasons. We started out in this list by talking about identifying our reasons, that voice, that reason calling us forward, our North Star purpose in life. As you begin to train these muscles, these breakthrough muscles, this defeating procrastination process that we've been talking about, as you increase momentum and increase capacity, we are now ready to redirect those new muscles and that energy squarely at the big targets of our life. The pressure, the stress, the tension, the conflict that used to defeat us, we are now trained and prepared for directly going to those primary purposes without needing to access a whole lot of practice and simulation. You're now ready to take on the big giants and knock them down too. Number seven, and this one is only for the daring, this is only for the courageous, this one. Go public within reason about your reason. Let me say that again, go public. What do I mean? Put it all over social media? Probably not, but maybe with family and a select group of your friends that you trust, go public with your mouth, put yourself out there and talk about the big reasons on the other side of your obstacle that you're pursuing. Why would you do that? You would do it because in the safe company of those that you trust, you're making yourself accountable to remain true to the commitment to keep on knocking down this obstacle so that you can arrive at the destination that you're trying to achieve. Going public within reason about your reason is one of the most powerful things that you can do on the road to resilience. I told the story recently about how when I signed up for my first ever Ironman triathlon, I went 
quite public, probably more public than most people would be willing to do. But it was good for me because I discovered that in my circle of colleagues, not everybody really thought that I had what it took. And that provoked in me an even stronger desire to prove it to myself and to everybody I actually could conquer this challenge. So you choose who is the safe group for you, but do this task, it will help you go public within reason about your reason, it'll do you good. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching today. I really appreciate when people take the time to sit through and watch these videos. I am so hopeful that it's helpful for you. And uh, if you're just joining the channel recently, or this might be the first video you're watching, I'd encourage you to click on this video up here now, which is the start of the whole series that we've been dealing with recently on raising strong men. And you can watch it all the way through, and I know that you'll get so much benefit from that. If you haven't subscribed, why don't you do that? Drop me a comment so I can hear your thoughts and hear your questions. That'd be fantastic too. And until next time, until the next episode, bye for now.